Good morning, everyone, and uh, happy Mother's Day to all of the ladies here. It uh, reminds me, of course, there's a lot of us that are old enough, our parents are gone, but uh, this was always a big day to my mama. You couldn't get her to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> my dad had to cook boy I mean it, it's Mother's Day <laughs> always remember that because she was really adamant about it's her day if uh, we have any visitors or if you'd like to leave a message for us that uh, this tab on your uh bulletin I must really be in a fog today but uh, the bulletin uh, leave us a note uh, we've got notices in the bulletin today from people that have turned them in and uh, we get able to get the message out to the, the whole church is uh, some Somebody gonna lead the music this morning? Don't look at me. Sure. Good morning, everybody. Um, as most of y'all came in, I tried to grab y'all and give you a survey. If y'all didn't get it, we've got more in the back. I'll get you one. But um, as y'all also know we are in the midst of searching for a new pastor i mean as much as we love jimmy he is temporary with us um so we are on the search so this survey will help us along the way um because we can't do it without y'all we need y'all's voice also Amen. so the reason y'all got it today and at the beginning is because i want y'all to fill it out now um I, I want it back. I want it back today. I want to give you all a few minutes to fill it out so we can we can get it done. Um, if you want more time, let me know. But the thing is, I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to write your name down because I'm going to find you. I'm going to hunt you down. Um, we're going to get it done. It, I mean, it's, we, it's important. We, we need the voice of everybody to get this done. And it can't be just the few of us that are on this committee that makes the decision. If you look at it, in each section, the biggest thing I ask you is just mark three of your biggest ones. I mean, I'm not saying you can't go and mark your twos, threes, and fours in that category also, but make sure you mark your top three things with that number one in each section. Um, and only three ones. So that way, we're going to take that consensus. And those that the things that fall in line that we want as a congregation is what we're going to go forth and search. Um, some of us have been through this. I just want to give you all a little background. Some of us have been through this. It is a long process. It's not, it's not just a short couple of months. Here we go. This can take anywhere for a year, 18 months and up. <clears throat> so be patient. Be praying. And be asking people let's let's get them back uh, you know more and more people are getting vaccinated more and more people I think are feeling like they can come out so let let's re let's regroup let's get those people back in here is there anybody that didn't get a survey real quick and I'll get you one everybody has one okay if y'all just take a few minutes um, before we go on and then let's uh, I don't know who's gonna I think we just start with the music Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get you one. Give me just a moment. I'll get you one. No, sir. I, I, cannot, I cannot do that. And my husband will And you can fill out your survey even while we're singing. If you need to, I'll leave you seated while we sing our first song. And it is with your bulletin insert. Love lifted me. All the verses, all three verses of love lifted me. You can fill out your survey as long as you keep singing because it's a well-known song. All right? You'll know the verses of it anyway. Uh, 
I uh, forgot to mention here that uh, Aspen Collinsworth, huh? And she's not here today. Okay, she's going to have our graduation party here over in the fellowship hall May the 27th <laughs> and uh, Sarah passed out that uh, deal and really we need your input uh, I don't think it's right that six people make a decision and uh, tell the church what it's going to be. So please give us some input. Thank you. Uh, we'll have the call to worship. Let the righteous be joyful. Let them exalt before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. We ascribe you all power and majesty, O God, to you singing our praise. Awesome is God in the sanctuary, and same God of Israel, who gives power and strength to the people. And we ascribe you all power and majesty, O God, and singing you our praises. Let us worship God. We sing praises to you, O Lord. We sing a psalm in your honor. You clothe us in all goodness. We are draped in accordance with your design. As you have sent Jesus Christ to make your will known, you promise our Holy Spirit to guide us as long along your path as your love holiness fills our halls hear us as we worship your name amen will the children please come forward good what is today mother's day what kind of what kind of moms are out there can y'all name me some kind of moms uh, grannies how about we've got don't forget about your fur baby moms, right? Right, so we got mamas of animals. We've got some of those moms that are just, oh man, they're really fun. They like to do the amusement rides, right? Those are your, those are your wild, wild and crazy moms that like to do that. I don't know if I could handle that too much, right? We have all kinds of moms out there. But did y'all know our moms are like flowers also? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you also five reasons why they're like flowers, right? Or how they're like flowers. Okay? Our mothers, they're beautiful and unique, right? Just like flowers. Each and every mother is different, and they're beautiful in their own unique way. Okay? She can be strong and resilient as a protector or have a smile like a sunflower. Two, our mothers have immense strength. They are strong. Plants are strong and hardy. They can prosper through the longest of droughts. Okay, our moms are like that. They're very strong women. Three, our moms also need a little love to bloom. When, when we leave home when we get older, sometimes we might not come home as much. Sometimes when we're younger, sometimes we might be mean and we don't know it, right? But you've got to make sure you talk to your mom. Go visit your mom. Call her on the phone, right? Also, our moms brighten us up. Just like flowers. If you walk into a room, you immediately smile. It brightens your day. Our moms can be just like that. If we're having a bad day or you're sad, she can come along and brighten that day, right? And then our very last one. Mothers see us through every occasion. They're always there for us. They're there for our birthdays. They're there in the bad times, in the good times, 
just like flowers we give flowers to people our moms are like that too so do y'all think y'all can help me this morning look at these beautiful flowers we have can y'all take one to every woman in our church can you help me with that Addison yeah. oh thank you let's get some you need an extra one to take to someone you may lift your hand and we'll get an extra one to you I know that sometimes people aren't able to come and you'd like to take a rose to them and I know that those who brought the roses would be glad to be able to let you take some home to them thank you mothers for all that you do thank you for being with us today may it be your good day today and thank you, little ladies, for helping us by delivering those roses out. Thank you all. Thank you all for providing roses for our mothers today, too. Hymn number 304, Into My Heart. And as we pray, already Don mentioned those who are the prayer requests that you have made known to us. and They are always already available in your leaflet right there in that passage on that page behind the songs. Take a look at those as we prepare ourselves to pray. And perhaps you would like to add a word of report or perhaps another prayer request that you would like to add to these. Anyone at all? Prayer requests. Any other? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, I was hoping I'd hear a report on Dakota. Thought about him all week long, prayed for him every day. Remember Dakota in prayer. Distance away, but prayers have no limit to the distance. That will pass God's blessing upon him. I have my older brother is in the hospital. Let's remember him in prayer. His name is Lester, Les Braswell. He's very ill, hoping that he's already out of the hospital and home by now, but not sure about that. Yes, sir. Brand new stage of life. Christopher. Christopher. says God's blessing on Christopher. You have an unspoken prayer request. You can lift your hand. It's an act of faith. Just God, hear our unspoken prayer request. There's lots of them that all of us have as well. Let's ask God's blessing and ask God's help with these prayers. God, we love you so very much. And we make prayer an important part of our worship because, Lord Jesus, not only is it privilege, but it's also the work, part of the work of our intervention for each other, intervention for the difficulties that people are facing, interventions for the concerns that we have, the worries that we have. For those who are even distances away, we pray right now, Lord, we concentrate together upon these special ones, the unspoken prayer requests that we have. We give them to you as well, asking humbly, Lord Jesus, that you do your best. Our private prayers are an important thing, Father, but when we come together corporately, the power of corporate prayer is a beautiful thing, and together we pray and intercede for each other. Help us, Lord. Help us with these unspoken needs. Give us guidance and also give us insight. Make us used as tools in bringing blessing to others. 
Thank you for the work of our church. We pray blessing upon its pulpit committee, Lord, as they make decisions, as well as the rest of the church, Father, and all the decisions that are made. These leaders of our church and everyone that's present today is a leader in so many ways, Lord, because of the needs. Help us and bless us and give us guidance and your leadership, Lord, overseeing us as under shepherds and doing your work. We love you. Now, even as you've taught us to pray, we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And as we prepare for the Lord's Supper, join me as together we sing hymn number 425, first three verses.
seated. Reading from Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 29. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? And then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew, and the heat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, but it, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. A proverb says that God could not be everywhere all the time and so he made mothers. I know you know that proverb. I like that too. Perhaps more than the illusion of father, God is a mother because he is all. He is both, and God is all things put together. When God created, he created man and woman in his image. The place where more people say that they were when any other place and with any other person when they received Christ and they first believed was with their mothers around the dinner table. Isn't it interesting? Statistics show it. More than any other place and with any other person, that is true. Mothers instill a character of hope psychologically. We know what they do psychologically. They instill hope. Absence of mother precludes loss of hope. If you're a professional counselor or if you're someone who is involved in teaching, then you know that the loss of a mother at an early age for a child can instill a sense of loss of hope. And that hope has to be instilled from somewhere else. They represent the wisdom of God in many ways. I'm going to, in the next series of sermons, these next few sermons, be talking about the Christian year. The Christian year is something celebrated specifically and distinctly in the churches of uh, our faith and in similar faiths and those who are involved in the Reformed tradition of theology. Many do not. The Christian year isn't celebrated. Christian year has a good reason to it. It reminds us. As a matter of fact, this coming year, you and I will not be surprised, I hope you won't be, to find that Reformed churches, those churches who are of the former Reformed tradition, as you are, who have a little more formality to worship, will probably bounce back a little better than the other evangelical churches. Not to say, or even hope that happens, I hope that all bounce back, but you and I celebrate the Christian year and people need to be reminded why they're meeting. As a good friend of mine, when I was a Baptist pastor, I grew up a Baptist and was a Baptist pastor for 25 years, someone said to me one day, they said, you know, Jimmy, you Baptists, you have no form to your faith. And I said, what do you mean we have no form to our faith? They say, oh, you sing a couple of songs and the preacher gets up in the pulpit and just has a fit. And I said, well, that's a terrible way to describe the Baptist faith. And he said, well, that's basically what it happens. We have form to our faith. There's form to our faith, and that form includes the Christian year. I love your stained glass. I'm a fan of stained glass, but I've always admired the stained glass here at Bethany because your stained glass has representations of the Christian year. And in this brief series of sermons, I say that to say you're having a series of sermons is a good way to kill attendance. But <laughs> we will have a series of sermons, but they're going to be talking about the Christian year. I'll use your glass as examples of that. And today, the piece of glass up above me, the one that stands out, will represent the wisdom of God. The anemone is really what that is. It's among others, also the uh, 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 many different flowers represent the anemone, the six petaled flower. There's a five-petaled flower over here on the other side, and that really represents another aspect of the Christian year. 
Today I'm going to take that symbol as well as the symbol of the triangle over here in the circle, representing all the aspects of God. God and God's care for his people. The anemone or the uh, day star, the day, the, the, uh, I'm trying to think of another word for it, not just anemone, but it's another, another name for the flower. Uh, also known as the lily of the valley. Lily of the valley is representation of God's care for his people. God represented by the triangle and God's care of his people is the wisdom of God. The divine and the human meeting together. God does care for his children. Represented by this. Not like that being the main piece of glass up here. God cares for his children. He cares for his children supernaturally but he also cares for his children through you. Through his children. He cares for the others. He cares for all who seek his goodness. Job 34 has a reference to that in Job 34. He says, so listen to me, you young men of understanding. Far be it from God to do evil, from the Almighty to do wrong. He repays a man for what he has done and brings upon him what his conduct deserves. It is unthinkable that God would do wrong, that the Almighty would pervert justice. Who appointed him over the earth? Who put him in charge of the whole world? If it were his intention... And he withdrew his spirit and breath. All mankind would perish together. A man would return to dust. Wisdom is found in the presence of God with his people. You bring great meaning to the world. The world really doesn't understand that. Really doesn't have a good definition of it, but you do. Right now the world is blessed because of you. You know the tradition of reading the Bible, how that God was going to bless the world through Israel, and that when you and I became believers, you and I have been grafted in as the new Israel. We are blessing the world by your very presence. I had a boss one day when I was working for Wolf Nurseries, and Wolf Nurseries owe them a great deal. They gave me a job early in high school, and then they also transferred me to Abilene while I went to college, and I worked for them there and worked as a manager, and then even was going to be transferred to the uh, Fort Worth area, but I decided at that point to change jobs and work for a different company while I was going to seminary. While I was working for them, a boss came to me one day and he said, Jimmy, can you come into the office for a minute? And I thought I was really going to get in trouble once more. (laughs) I got in trouble many times with this particular boss because he was rather unscrupulous. And I was constantly in his face and probably shouldn't have been maybe I should have been for his dishonesty one day in particular he had thrown away some or I had cleaned out some grapes grape plants that were bagged up they were bagged up grapes and those grapes tend to die quickly if they're not bought and some had died and that was my area of expertise is that particular area of the nursery and so I threw them away he came out and put them back on the shelf and uh, he called me in and said, Jimmy, you threw some grapes away, and I put them back on the shelf, and I said, I recognize that, and you know they're dead. And he said, yes, I know that, but somebody will buy them. And I said, I won't sell them. And he said, you'll sell them or I'll fire you. And I said, then you better fire me, because I'm not going to do dishonest things, even working for you. If I do honest things, that's why I'm your top salesman, by the way. I know that. It's because I'm honest with people and I'm good to them and they come back in and buy things. If you don't want me as your, as your salesman, I guarantee you someone else will, will hire me. And I don't shut up. <laughs> I will tell them why I was fired. He said, just get out of my office. So I went back in and out to work and sure enough, he tend to forget about that instance but he was often calling me back in because he wanted me to do what he wanted me to do and sometimes that was not being honest call me in this next time though this one I was referring to and he said Jimmy why is it that you're top salesman when I don't like you (laughs) and I said I don't know why that is let me preclude this by the way that eventually I married he and his wife and eventually he got back into the church that he had left out of he grew up in in a little town around Abilene and eventually got back into it and we were made friends but he didn't like me at that time and most of it was because of my faith 
and he would often make fun of my faith. And one day when he brought me in this particular day, he said, I, I don't understand why you're a top salesman. And I said, you, you know, I'm gonna tell you a secret. I'm gonna say, because I'm here, this place is blessed. They said, that was rather arrogant. And I said, no, it's not. It's fact. I said, I'm here. If I wasn't here and you continued to follow the practices that you tend to follow, your company would fold up. Because you've got to do what's right. If you do what's right and you follow God's way and you bring God with you, blessing will come to the place where you work. That's part of scripture. He said, Jimmy, you were really walking the line, weren't you? Yes, I was. I was young. <laughs> Might not do that today. Yes, I would. That blessing came because of the presence. Your presence out in the world, your presence at your workplace, your presence in the school, your presence out in community organizations brings blessing to the world. While you're driving around Odessa and grappling about the traffic, as I do, or griping about how much trash there is that's thrown out, remember that your presence here makes a difference. And thank God that you have opportunity to have a difference and to make a difference in the place where you live. We're a combination of dust and spirit, human and divine. And as Job said, if God were absent from us, we would just be dust. The wisdom of God is that there is both in us. I love it that at Masonic funerals, Often those memorial services, they'll place petals of flowers as illustrations of the dust that a person is returning to. They'll also say that the spirit returns to God. Body to dust, but the spirit to God. The wisdom of the Lord Jesus, his spirit, his breath in us is our presence in the world. That's why we have the Christian year. And we'll talk about the rest in, on another day, each one. The Christian year is to remind us of the care of God upon us and to remind us also to continue to em emphasize that care of God upon the world, to go out and serve the world, to be in the world. The Christian traditions of the Christian year are to remind us that we are but dust without the Spirit of God dwelling in us. The wisdom of God is the character of God, the righteousness of God dwelling in us through Jesus Christ. The traditions like mothers bring a sense of hope and the wisdom of God in us. Reading from John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. You already know the verses. You're already, many of you, if you've memorized it, are already saying it, those first few verses out of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through the world, though the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet all who received him to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision of a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out saying, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me is, has surpassed me because he, has before, he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. We are doing the same thing as disciples, reaching out into the world and making him known. Jesus has brought us God in the fullness of his character and spirit, and he has brought hope and wisdom to us. My mother was killed in a car accident in Andrews when I was a little boy. 1964, 
I was nine years old, and for me, psychologically, it was a devastating time. There was a loss of hope, meaning. I don't remember for the year, a year and a half after that, a single happy moment until my conversion in 1965 at 10 years old. My third grade teacher simply passed me. I really flunked the third grade. But my teacher went ahead and passed me. I failed it, but she passed me. The only memory I have of her was her slapping me in the middle of the back for talking during class. Never forgot it. I can still feel it to this day, which is another story, isn't it? Uh, another lesson for us to learn. I still remember it well. Then came that Sunday after being convicted by my sin. He who made mothers called me to hope in him, and life has never been the same. I remember just as well as that slap in the back that walk home that Sunday morning with my father and him telling me, I didn't know you were thinking about this. I've been thinking about it a long time, Dad. In Jesus, there is a future for me, isn't there? Yes, there is, Jimmy. Only in God is there a future for you. We miss her, don't we? And I said, yes, I do. I miss her. And he said, well, God will be both mother and father to you. I'll do my best as father too, but he'll be your mother too. He will be hope for you. Hope that comes from him is hope that is real. It makes all the difference. The same kind of hope that mothers instill, the Lord can instill in us. Would you bow your heads? A few moments that I'm going to give in meditation as the pianist plays is an opportunity for you to think about what God has done in your life how he has brought hope to you. And if he hasn't brought that hope to you, the offer for him to come into your heart and be your savior is made even this morning for me that the Holy Spirit might touch your heart and move you to the point of receiving him as savior and Lord. We're going to be still for just a few moments and let you contemplate that hope that he's brought into you and also perhaps a memory of a mother. Memory of a mother living, a memory of a mother who has already gone into the kingdom the hope that was instilled, what God gave you in a life through that mother as well as through your conversion. Be still just a moment and let God speak to your heart.